Welcome to module 9.6. In this lesson, you learn how to create fabrication documentation using Advanced Steel. Autodesk Advanced Steel can produce a wide range of documentation such as individual part drawings, assembly drawings, CNC code for fabrication, cutting lists and parts lists, and many more outputs to suit fabricators. Before drawings and documents can be created, you will first need to number all the parts and assemblies within the model. Advanced Steel will then collect elements that have the same geometry and give this the same number. OK, so Autodesk Advanced Steel is now running and we'll create a new drawing. So go ahead and select Start Drawing and Advanced Steel will create a new document. If you've got any padlets open in Advanced Steel, you can just close those off by clicking on the little X here just to tidy up the screen. And what we'll do here is we'll begin by importing our Revit model. So let's select Export and Import. And right at the start of the ribbon, you can see that we have a Revit panel. And in this case here, we'll click Import. We'll select our Steel Markup Language file and select Open. And Advanced Steel will now start to import this document through. This will take between one and two minutes to open up. And of course, if you didn't want all of the steel work from Revit, then we could have hidden all of the unwanted steel work and just perhaps bring across a smaller part of the structure. But in this case, of course, this is going to bring all the steel work across from our entire project. OK, so you can now see Advanced Steel has imported our Revit model. Before we view the model, let's change the visual style here from 2D wireframe to shaded. Advanced Steel defaults to having this gradiated blue background. I'm going to change mine to a black background, so I can just type in the background command inside Advanced Steel. And here we'll switch this from a gradiated background to solid in here. And then I'll change my solid color perhaps to this black color just here and click OK. OK, so we can now view the model. So let's zoom out a little bit here and we can obviously rotate around the model using the same tools as we do in Revit. So you can see we can just use shift and middle mouse button there to rotate around the model. If we want to inspect some of the properties of the model, of course, we can zoom into these elements here. We'll notice that all the connections have come through from Revit. These are, of course, now advanced steel connections. These are advanced steel steel sections. For example, if I select this column here and right mouse click, I can go to advanced properties. And in the advanced steel beam properties, I can then review the property set that's come across directly from Revit. You'll notice on the naming tab here, currently this is not defined. This is our first task. We need to give each of these components a part mark. To do this, we'll close down our advanced steel dialog box here and we'll just zoom out a little bit. Let's select the home ribbon and on the home ribbon under the documents panel, you can see that we have numbering. Let's select numbering. You'll notice here that we're going to process single parts and we'll also process assemblies as well. I'll leave all the other defaults the same and we'll select OK. So now Advanced Steel will scan the model. It's going to look for components and plates and things like that that have exactly the same geometry. That can be set with a tolerance if you want to. So you could set a tolerance of perhaps half a millimeter or something or a millimeter. But what it's going to do is collect all the parts and you can now see that we can see the ID of each component here. We have how many objects it's collected, the name and the part mark. OK, so let's go ahead and close down the numbering dialog box. And now we're ready to create our actual documents. Once again, on the documents panel here, you can see that we have something called drawing processes padlet. If we select this, we'll get another padlet that will pop up on the left hand side here. Now, what we're going to do here is make sure that we've selected the parts button and this will just give us all of the single parts in the model. These drawing processes are pre-created to allow us to create drawings just of single parts. And you can see here that we have parts, we have the sheet size that it's going to create, whether we want a single or a multiple number of parts on the drawing, and also whether we have a bit of materials on there. So in my case here, I'm going to select parts A1 multi with a bit of materials. Let's go ahead and select this. In the process properties dialog, we have to tell advanced still what we actually want to create drawings of. So in this case here, I'm going to say all single part plate and we'll click OK. So advanced still will now start to spoon out the drawings. So what it's going to do is pack multiple uh, parts on the same sheet 
and when it runs out of space it will then create a second sheet and start to pack the views on and so on. Again this will just take a minute or two to create these documents and then we'll be able to view them. These documents are actually DWG files. Okay so the drawings have now been created. If we want to view these drawings we can come up to the document manager here and select this and you'll see the document manager now opens. On the left hand side we can expand the details folder. We can see that all the drawings are up to date in here. We'll expand that and currently we just have three sheets or three drawings. Let's view one of these so I'll select perhaps this one here 127. I'll select the preview ribbon up here and you can now see advanced still is displaying the drawing. All of this is completely automated. So of course here you'll see that it's laid out all the plates automatically. It's marked them up automatically here. So we've got the quantity of plates that are actually required, the actual part number itself, the mark. And you can see in here all of the dimensioning is automatically created as well. Of course, we can get in and tweak and edit this if we wanted to. But that's the default output from Advanced Steel. Let's have a look at another drawing. So I'll click 128. And again here you can see the plates have been laid out and dimensioned. Okay, let's close down the document manager. If we wanted to here, we could of course create some other types of documents. So you'll notice here we can create CNC code for automated machines. We can create DXFs for things like laser cutters. What we'd also do here is take a little look at some assembly drawings. So again in the drawing processes palette here, we'll select assemblies, which is the top button here. And in this case here, what I'm going to do is create assemblies A0 multiple with a bit of materials. Now you can see here we can select our parts if we want to here. But again, I want to create all of the assembly drawings. So in this case here, I can say all MP. And we can click OK. Again, this will just take a few minutes to do. Obviously, there's going to be probably more assembly drawings than there were single part drawings. So this could take uh, one to two minutes to create these. Okay, so you can now see the assembly drawings have been created. So let's go back up to the document manager and we'll review some of these assembly drawings. So once again in the document manager, we can expand the details folder in here. We can click on the plus button and we can see obviously all of the documents are up to date as well. And in here, if we want to review some of these, we can see that we can select perhaps this first one here. And again, select preview. And of course, similar to the single part drawings, you can now see that we have, in this case, beams. Let's have a look at another one. So I'll just click this one here, 105 perhaps, and we'll view this one. So I can see here in this particular example, I've got my haunched beam. And of course, if we zoom in here, we can now see that Advanced Steel has numbered up all of the components for us. Again, it's created a nice assembly drawing of this. It obviously breaks the beam here, so we're not wasting paper. But you can see that we have the real dimensions on all of this. It even creates little sections for us. So we can see we've got a couple of sections actually cut through the assembly to help us understand what we're looking at. And of course, again, down here, we have a full bit of materials for all of the components needed for this particular assembly. Talking about components and parts lists and things like that, let's view some of those. So we'll close down our document manager and we'll now create a couple of parts lists. To do this on the documents panel, let's select BOM template palette. And you can see we have another palette opened up. I'll just close down my assemblies one. And here you can see that we have a number of different predetermined processes to create our bit of materials. So let's take a look at the parts list. So I'll select the middle button here and we can now see that we have a number of different pre-formatted templates for these parts lists. So you can see I've got a saw list, I've got saw list with pictures and so on. In this case, I'm just going to get a list of bolts. So I'll select bolt list here. And you'll see that then Advanced Steel will create this bit of materials for me. And of course, I can then export that out to PDF or Excel or whatever format I desire. Again, this will just take a few seconds to create. So you can see we're almost done here now. And here's our bolt list. So you can, of course, see that we have all of our various different sizes in here. The length of each bolt, the grade, the type of coating we want, the quantities of those in here, and even the weights as well. And of course, we can do this for any element in Advanced Steel. Or we can just get a holistic overview of everything in the model. OK, let's click on No to save changes here. OK, so you can now see that we can quite easily create some useful documentation directly from our Revit model by importing it into Advanced Steel and then running those simple tools that I've just shown you here. 
Now, of course, there's much more to advance still, but that's a quick overview of how we could use it with Revit to produce basic fabrication outputs. Okay, so that concludes this lesson and this module.